This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. And we start out this week with a lot of bad news on the EV front. First off, Tesla announced it's laying off 10% of its global workforce, which would translate to about 14,000 employees. That's almost as much as Rivian's total workforce, which is about 16,800 people. Also, Tesla cut the monthly subscription fee for full self-driving in half. Prior to this, owners paid $199 a month for FSD. Now it's down to $99. FSD was part of the justification for Tesla's massive market cap, but the stock price is down 30% this year. On top of that, there's no construction going on at its plant site in Mexico, and Mexican officials complain that they can't get any answers from Tesla or Musk. That plant was reportedly going to be the site for Tesla's revolutionary assembly process, what it calls unboxed assembly. And that was going to be key for developing an inexpensive EV with good profit margins. But then, Musk said the first line for the $25,000 car would be in Austin, Texas, followed by Mexico. And all this comes on the heels of reports that Tesla is now canceling its affordable EV, though Elon Musk denies that. And BP, the oil giant, is also laying off 10% of the people that it has working on EV chargers in its business unit called BP Pulse. Specifically, it laid off 100 of the 900 employees there. And it pulled out of eight countries where an expected surge in commercial EVs for fleet customers never materialized. BP Pulse says it will concentrate on the U.S., the U.K., Chinese, and German markets, which is where EVs are growing the fastest. But it's not all doom and gloom on the EV front. Honda is plunging ahead on its EV investments in Ohio. It's consolidating two assembly lines at its Marysville plant into one. That will enable it to make ICE and EVs on that one line. It's also retooling its Anna engine plant to bring in six 6,000-ton die-casting machines to make battery cases. The aluminum cases will be cast in two pieces and then friction stir-welded together. All those investments come to $700 million bucks, and another $4.4 billion is going into a battery cell plant that it's building with LG. Honda will start making EVs in Ohio next year, with a goal of reaching 85% BEV sales in 2035 and 100% by 2040. It's a big week for the UAW. Volkswagen workers in Tennessee will cast votes Wednesday through Friday on whether or not they want to join the union. If they do, it would be the only foreign auto plant in the U.S. represented by the union. The UAW also filed a petition earlier this month with the National Labor Relations Board to hold a union vote at Mercedes plant in Alabama as well. The UAW hopes these votes will be a springboard to organize more non-unionized plants around the country, but it hasn't succeeded in past efforts to organize non-union plants, so this is going to be fascinating to see what happens. But maybe the UAW better pay attention to this next story because more and more automakers are starting to test humanoid robots on the production line. BMW announced plans earlier this year to start training robots at its plant in South Carolina over the next two years. Chinese automaker Neo is testing humanoid robots at one of its plants, and Tesla, of course, is developing its own robot called Optimus. But it's not just automakers that are interested in humanoid robots. The supplier Magna is planning to test them at its manufacturing facilities. The robots were developed by a startup called Sanctuary AI from Vancouver, which Magna has been an investor in since 2021. Magna didn't reveal specifically where, when, or what purpose the robots will be used for, but it did say they'll be used, quote, across multiple applications within automotive manufacturing processes. With Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. 
After Friday's show last week, John and I were invited back to vehicle benchmarking specialist Caresoft to continue to follow them on their teardown of the Tesla Cybertruck. We thanked some of the team there for laying out parts of the systems for display because it made it really easy to demonstrate the evolution of the Tesla brand, and not just compared to legacy automakers, but also to itself. I think the best example might be its approach to the auxiliary battery. Everybody has always used a 12-volt lead-acid battery, which Tesla did as well, for a while. But by the time the Model Y rolled around, it was ready to make a change. And more importantly, as Carisoft President Terry Wachowski points out, listen to how fast it made that change. And quite amazing, within a year, that was replaced with this. So that 12 volt lead acid battery was replaced with a 16 volt lithium ion. This is unreal, it is so light. One point, oh uh, my gosh. 1.8 kilograms. That is beautiful. So mass begets mass, but in an EV, it's, ex it's exceptionally uh, important because you have to carry your mass with you. So it, it's gonna, it, it takes range. And in order to get range, it takes batteries. Well, batteries are heavy and they're very expensive. And, uh, so mass is, is one of your biggest enemies. This all comes down to Tesla's first principles thinking, breaking down previous assumptions or barriers to create truly innovative solutions. So it dumped the industry standard lead acid for a lithium ion battery, and it also boosted voltage from 12 up to 16 volts. That significantly cut the weight and size of that battery. And you can see those same principles applied to the 48 volt battery of the Cybertruck. And you can see even more of this in the video with John and Terry. But there's also some other areas where the Cybertruck might not be the breakthrough of efficiency like the Model 3 or YR. Chinese automaker Cherry is making a big push into the European car market. It's nearing a deal to start building vehicles in Spain. And now the company's chairman says, it's going to sign a deal with a premium European brand to share its platform. That deal is expected to be announced sometime this week. Cherry didn't say what brand it is, but it does have a joint venture with Jaguar Land Rover to build its vehicles in China, so that's a possibility. Cherry's chairman also said it's in talks with another premium European brand for platform sharing, and it's in talks with two other brands for possible partnerships. Cadillac revealed the interior of its upcoming small electric crossover, the Optic. The dashboard appears large and seems to jut out over the passenger's legs. At first, I thought the piece that sticks out in the middle of the dash was a place to rest and charge your phone. But it's a styling element for one of the vents and also houses the HVAC controls. And like the Lyric, it has a large curved display screen. The Optic is built on the same platform as the Chevy Equinox EV and the Buick Electra E4, and it should be on sale before the end of the year. Here's a cool looking off-road EV that actually has a chance of making it to the market. It's the M Hunter from luxury off-road brand M Hero, which is part of Chinese automaker Dongfeng. The details are few right now. It's only using flashy wording like military-grade technology and aerospace-grade carbon fiber. But Gascu reports there are plans to put it into production. M-Hero currently has one other vehicle, the 917, a large SUV that's offered as a BEV and as a range-extended electric vehicle. The BEV has a four-motor setup with 1,088 horsepower and will do 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. The E-Rev has 816 horsepower, over 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles of range, and roughly a $90,000 starting price tag. The 917 is just making its way to the European market on top of China, and we would expect a similar setup and market launch for the M-Hunter. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Keeping your heart racing in 
and out of the gym. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza Sport AS tires with a 50,000 mile limited warranty. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi 4 compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software-defined vehicles.